Hey everybody, welcome to Overland News from Overland Expo. I'm Nick Janes, Director of Communications. With me as always, our Associate Editor, Rick Stowe. Hey Rick, how you doing? Doing great, Nick, how about yourself? I'm good, I'm sorry I'm not sitting right next to you in our beautiful LX Ultimate Overland vehicle this time, but uh, you know, not every time can be as, as fun as in person as that shoot was. And folks, if you haven't watched that episode, we did one live, kind of kind of live yeah we shot it live we didn't air it live though from the uh, pacific northwest show in redmond oregon in july that was a really fun one this one now we're back in our studios across the country rick's in virginia and i'm in oregon as always but uh rick let's just jump right into it this one is um kind of a mix of of news and sort of opinion like we love to do kicking it off with the ineos grenadier quartermaster the pickup from uh from grenadier I, I want to, you know, Rick, I'm just going to step back. I, I thought because it was British, I thought it was going to be Grenadier or something. Um, <laughs> yeah. But it is Grenadier. So, but this thing is interesting, right? Um, it's the pickup truck version of the Ineos uh, Grenadier SUV, which is just called Ineos Grenadier, um, that we saw a couple years ago and is now finally kind of uh, going on sale. I don't think anyone's taking delivery in the US yet, but they have in the UK. Just to uh, level set for everyone, this is Ineos is a petrochemical company. The owner wanted to buy the plans of the Defender from Land Rover. They said no, so he made his own Defender. Uh, they sued him, uh, and UK court said no. It's you know it's an homage. It's not a ripoff. He's free to do whatever he wants. And so Ineos Grenadier is live uh, on the roads in England now. Um, solid axles, front and rear. Um, Coil springs uh, at all four corners, uh, f optional front and rear lockers. It's uh, powered in the United States by a 3.0 liter gasoline BMW inline six. In uh, Europe, you can specify a diesel burning variant of that engine. It's got 7,500 pounds of towing, 1,700, did I say 7,500 pounds of towing? 1,700 pounds of payload. Uh, the bed for the Quartermaster is just slightly over five feet wide, about five feet long, which makes it uniquely um, sized there, at least in width. And um, UK pricing to US dollar equivalent is about $87,000, which is a pretty penny. Um, before we go into a little bit more on that, Rick, what are your initial thoughts? Yeah, so the actual you know SUV Grenadier that we got to check out a couple Overland Expos ago, I thought was just a really good looking truck, uh, kind of the Defender that could have been. Uh, not that I don't necessarily like the current Defender, but it, it obviously is an evolution and, and kind of a more futuristic version of uh, the last body style. And I think the Grenadier really captured that. It's got some different DNA there. Uh, I, I describe it to people that haven't seen it as kind of a, a Defender and a G-Wagon and with possibly a little bit of you know some other vintage SUV all mishmashed together for a pretty impressive and good-looking truck, and uh, you know price-wise, like you said on the Quartermaster, it's up there. But uh, when you're comparing it to the new Defender, it's not that far off. Um, personally, I think I like the SUV version a little bit more. Uh, maybe that's just the I don't know the the classic SUV uh, with the high top there versus the. Uh, four door with the compact bed, but I think the Quartermaster is uh, definitely got plenty of functionality built in. Uh, I can see that looking really good with like a canvas uh, soft top over the bed uh, to kind of bring it back to its classic roots. Ooh, you know, I hadn't thought about the canvas soft top. That could be, that could be really cool. And and, and honestly, I was all I was all in on SUV. I thought, oh, I don't know if I need to see the pickup truck version. But then when Quartermaster debuted, I was you know. I was left given pause here. I don't know. I really do not know which way I would go. Frankly, if you're spending that kind of money, I do want a little bit more utility. I would probably want that bed. It's close to the old, the original Defender 130. Um, the new mm -hmm. Defender 130 now is an eight, you know, eight seater um, SUV. And so a far cry from that original 130. So this one sort of fits the bill a little bit better, but I keep imagining it, Rick, with a Mitz alloy, uh, tray and canopy on the back. I feel like that might be the most yeah. incredible overland build you could ever do in the history of the world. I don't know, but when I was You're pricing big, out, I like it. Yeah. Thank you, man. Um, hyperbole, hyperbole to the max. Uh, you know, when I built up, you know, so here's the thing, right? So I've been building and modifying overland trucks for 15 years, maybe more. 
and I've spent a lot of money and I've gone all the routes, right? You know, different automakers, different SUV, truck platforms, whatever, and building them to different flavors. And I've kind of come to a revelation, at least the last couple of months, the last couple of years, that if you can get something that's been developed from the factory to do the things and has the options from the factory, meaning the mm -hmm. original guys and gals who pen to the dang thing and are indeed the dang thing have all the stuff available for it, it's probably worth it, right? And so uh, all of this to say is when I priced out my Ineos SUV, the Grenadier SUV, the, my ideal build, my dream build was like 90,000 bucks USD, right? So that's yeah. a lot, that's a lot. But you think about it, it comes with like $30,000 worth of stuff on it, you know? Yeah, yeah. So, so if you were gonna go buy an upper mid-level trim, anything else, I mean like Tundra or Oh, I don't know. You can't even like Forerunner, like so, like what? A Forerunner yeah. is probably like with TRD off road fifty four, maybe with stuff on it, you know, with leather yeah. and some nice things. And then you've got to put another what forty fifty thousand dollars to make it kind of like near, kind of you know competitive to this car. Um, but then it's got you know right. a worse transmission, a worse engine, smaller interior, uglier about mm -hmm. exterior, you know, all these sort of things. Like suddenly ninety thousand dollars, not. You know, it's still a lot of money, but in the grand scheme of things, probably not because it's coming from this way from the factory and all these things were designed yeah. to work together. You know what I mean? Like once you start putting a different suspension on and a different fridge and different electronics and like nothing's works together like the way mm -hmm. they would from the factory. Cause again, it was designed to work together from the factory. So, um, yeah. this is, this is the biggest selling aspect or selling point I can think of for this truck is that, yeah, it's crazy expensive, but oh my God, it's going to be amazing out the door and it's going to be really good you know it has all the stuff it's got all the stuff so i'd rather yeah. roll all those things into my like you know loan than try to go piecemeal them later but um mm -hmm. i don't know it's interesting we'll see what the build quality is like i mean i'm 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 afraid of this thing a little bit you know because the british yeah. aren't already amazing at build quality and now you're doing like it's being <laughs> built in what like France or Latvia or something, right. I forget. You know, it's in an old Mercedes-Benz plant. Actually, they still have to make the front clips for the smart cars there. So, mm -hmm. I don't know. Like, and it also feels like the billionaire guy is, this was his pre project for a couple of years, his baby, but now he's buying um, a soccer team, um, Manchester <laughs> yeah. United or whatever in England. So I think he's kind of distracted now. So I don't know how much attention this business is really getting anymore. Anyway, my, my speech is over, Rick, go ahead. Yeah, no, uh, and I'm with you there. Any, anything that's a first generation, even from a big automaker, I'm a little nervous when everything's new, you know? And uh, this is like that compounded, you know? It's it's the first generation of anything they've ever built. Uh, I've got a friend, lives a couple hours from here, that's got a, uh, actually got his build sheet in, so he should be getting that relatively soon. So I'm very interested to check that out uh, because I've only ever seen that prototype at Overland Expo. Nick, uh, speaking of, of long-awaited uh, trucks and SUVs. We got some other news uh, here recently. The first Cybertruck rolled off the line uh, there outside of Austin, Texas. Um, before I uh, kind of give my opinion, what what have your thoughts been over the, what, several years since uh, the debut of the Cybertruck? Yeah, maybe five years, maybe more. Well, it still yeah. looks like it was drawn by a toddler in six seconds. <laughs> Um, and I think if you zoom in closely on that in the launch, ish, that you can actually see in classic Tesla form, the door doors are not aligned, the, the misalignment of doors, and you think they yeah. would make that, they would be, uh, their attention to detail in the very first one would be, uh, would at least been there, but apparently not, because it's Tesla, and uh, screw, screw the buyers, damn, damn with the buyers, you know? <laughs> but uh, anyway, go ahead, what's your thoughts, Rick? No, I'm right there with you. I, it has some interesting specs and some proposed features. I won't say features because a lot of the cool things like the tent and all of that and the tailgate that turns into a ramp, uh, we don't know if that actually made it through development. Mm -hmm. But yeah, it's just the look. It's a little too futuristic for me, but not even like current futuristic. It's like if someone designed a futuristic truck in 1989. Like that's how I feel it would it would have looked, you know? Mm -hmm. um, yeah, and it's just too geometric, and, and I'm with you there. Uh, I've seen too much uh, varying quality, especially like in an interior uh, in, in other Tesla models for me to get excited about this thing. Um, if it does what it's supposed to do off-road, it may win back a bit of my uh, 
the, the charm of it, but uh, until I see it come through there and it lasts a while, oh, and, and then produce more than one, uh, I remain hesitant. Yeah, um, the design is idiotic. Um, I recently <laughs> showed, and we won't be able to show this because we don't have the rights to the photo, but recently someone snapped a picture of, uh, in one of their factories, they've wrapped one of the um, you know, early variants to look like um, a Ford Lightning but it just underscores, mm -hmm. it's like, I think they're trying to dunk on Ford, but if it just reminds you how idiotic the Cybertruck looks when you put a really good looking truck over it and it looks like yeah. someone rolled over a, a Ford. And it's like, no, yeah. that's not, what, that's not how it's accomplishing what you think it is. You know, like the frunk is tiny, which is a big problem for that, that vehicle. Um, and then it's got, you know, the big tip bed, but like, so what? Like everyone, every like, I mean, if you think Chevy and Ford don't know how to do big bed, you know, get over yourself. Yeah. Um, and then there was all the past things like Elon in, in the past had mentioned, like it can float for a short time. And I was like, oh, tell me that you know nothing about water crossings or water safety in a vehicle by telling me. Yeah. You know what I mean, like it's idiotic and people know watching this will know you don't want a vehicle to float in the water. That's how you lose no. control and turn into a boat and float yeah. downstream and die and roll over. Like you want yeah. also a truck that heavy. My God, if it floats, what the hell's going on? No, it should be on yeah. the bottom of the, 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 the riverbed or whatever's going on. So obviously, look, it looks idiotic. It's not gonna be well built. You know, it, it's probably not gonna be very capable. Like it's probably gonna be fast, you know, but yeah. I, years ago when it debuted, I was on a, a podcast with a friend um, when, because this guy has a podcast all about Mars. And so when um, you know Elon said it was the official vehicle of Mars or something, with like, I don't know how he gets to decide that anyway. But my buddy is like, look, Nick, you go look at all the, all the sci-fi movies of the early 80s and all of the future vehicles in those movies look like this. And I said, yeah, yeah, but that was what people in Hollywood in 1982 thought the future would look like. That wasn't a vision of the actual future, right? That was yeah. a guess. <laughs> You know what I mean? So like, it's already like, like it's 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 an outdated vision of what the future's gonna be. Guess what? The future's here. It ain't that, sister. You know what I mean? Like, I just don't. <laughs> I, uh, this thing yeah, just no. drives me up the wall. And there's other models like the Rivian. You know, I think it's like a good interpretation of a modern, you know, slightly futuristic design. Um, some of the more retro mod stuff, like Alpha Motors, that they have, I think is really cool. That you know, the technology's there, but kind of a throwback. Yeah, uh, I, it looks like it would make a great ramp for the neighborhood kids to like ride their bikes off of. But outside of that, I can't think of anything to say about the uh, that over geometric design that I'm I'm a fan of. So yeah, well, it exists now, and we'll never live in a time that's after this. So <laughs> it's uh, we're in but, cyber cyber tr uh, truck, you know, life now, and you'll just see them on the road. You're not wrong. I've determined though, you know, Rick, um, when when the Model Three came out, I used to give all those people, those owners, the thumbs down. Um, when I saw them, which really upset yeah. them, which really upset because they, they were so hot to drop. And then I've decided yeah. now I'm just going to do, remember that old cartoon from probably, oh, 20 years ago now when like a guy driving around in the Hummer, uh, the original H1 or an H2 rather in this cartoon. It was a, like a meme kind of cartoon before memes was a thing. Um, and everyone's <laughs> pointing and laughing at him. Uh, I'm going to do that with uh, the cyber. There you go. I'm, gonna, yeah. I'm just going to point and violently laugh. At, <laughs> anytime I see one from now on, I'm sure the owners are gonna, you know, lose their mind because they're probably spending $160,000 on a stupid bed truck. Anyway, right. Yeah. <laughs> Let's be yeah. positive so, for hey. now. What do we got coming for the next yeah. Overland Expo Mountain West? Yeah, Mountain West is just around the corner, and that is a really great event. Uh, if you haven't been, it's uh, been in, been in existence a couple of years now, Three, and has yeah. really, yeah, it yeah, really grown. And uh, we've got some stuff up on the compass uh, about the Cybertruck and the Quartermaster, but a lot of news is coming around the bend for Mountain West. Uh, one of the things we want to talk about is Kenda is hosting a ride and drive that is going to allow participants to test their RT, AT2, and MT2 models of the Kenda Cleaver. Uh, these courses are always really well designed. I'm always really impressed with how many cool features, you know, like 
the rock gardens and uh, water crossings and mud pits and off camber sections, they cram into a relatively small space. And that will allow you to kind of decide what tire's right for you, you know? Uh, will, it, will an AT, AT do what you need to do? Uh, will something go up a notch to the RT? Or do you want to go all in with those MT2s on the Kenda Cleaver? And uh, we also have got a lot of things nailed down for the moto activities at West. Uh, going to start off with the Ride With Us program, something that I'm always hoping that I can find some time to get into. We talked about how I've, I'm uh, tempted to get a bike now, and uh, this is a great way to kind of get some instruction in a controlled environment from the experts and uh, kind of see if, if, if it's right for you before diving in. Um, and then Nick, the Moto Party. If you've been to Overland Expo and you've been there in the evening when that's happening, you have to be aware of it because the cheers, the laughter, literally echoes throughout the event uh, every single time. Got a lot of great prizes and things like that. And of course, we'll have uh, you know different bikes, everything from like the Tenere there for folks to ride to if you're looking for the electric route, Ubco and some other companies are there. And then there's lots of classes to where you can you know up your moto knowledge, all kinds of backcountry skills, maintenance, uh, route planning, stuff like that. Uh, really a lot going on for our two-wheeled overlanding brethren. Cool. Thank you, Rick. I appreciate that. Yeah, folks. The ride and drive opportunities are, are really special and, and cool ones. And so if you haven't checked those out, come out, Loveland, Colorado. It is the uh, August 24th through 26th. We'd love to see you. It's a fun one. It's going to be a hot a scorcher. It usually is, but uh, you know what? Hey, it's uh, August in Colorado, so it's going to be no matter what. But cool. Well, thank you, Rick. Really appreciate it. Good to chat with you as always. And folks, speaking of always, encourage you to like, subscribe, and hit the notification button so you know when any of these videos and other ones from us go live. We'll wrap it up right there. For Overland News from Overland Expo, I'm Nick Janes. Thanks for watching.